the sequence number 12 that is y clip dl click here okay all these sequences are not highlighted means we have selected one sequence keeping aside the sequence one the 13 sequence is not our sequence this is by default appearing don't click on that if you select that then it will create problem you cannot go further please keep it in mind okay we have selected all the 12 sequences which we are going to align now we will click on alignment click on alignment now it is asking which uh, software you are going to use two softwares are there in this mega 11 mega software align by cluster w this way align by muscle again there are two methods you can apply by simple alignment nucleotide wise or you can align with codon wise we are not identifying the codons so we are simply identifying the nucleotides and therefore we will use the nucleotide data as it is so we can use either cluster w or muscle let us use cluster w it is one of the common softwares used for alignment click on align by cluster w the first option then it is asking us what are the scoring matrix that we will be using now i have not talked on the scoring matrices how to design them how to go for uh, sequence alignment what are the principles that's why you should not approach changing these figures gap opening penalty gap extension penalty what does it mean i have not discussed in detail so for the the purpose of doing sequence analysis, if you are not sure what scoring matrix should be followed, simply keep them as default and click OK. Click them as, say, keep them as default unless you are an expert, then click OK. The system will take care of it. So it is doing the pairwise alignment first. Each of the sequence is aligned with each of the others. Then it will be doing the multiple sequence alignment total all sequences will be aligned with each other it may take little bit of time 30 seconds to 1 minute depending upon the length of the sequences or the complexity of the data available so you wait for few seconds then you will get the result okay multiple second I mean also done after some time automatically it will stop yeah it has stopped and created this picture now you see this is the final alignment so unlike the previous picture here some gaps are created you see these are the gaps created yes 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 these gaps are created so if we see the alignment here without going to score we are not interested in getting the score here here we are only looking for whether there is large scale sequence similarity or segmental similarity or there is no any similarity as i said before in the first class that we have to ask three questions sequences first one is is there any large scale similarity between the sequences now it appears from this picture that no uniform color is there are throughout the sequences and there are many mutations here and there say in this position in some sequences there is e and in some others it is c okay so there is a mutation similarly here also in some sequence it is A, some sequence Z, some sequence T. So there are lot many variations are here. Over and above, the large scale similarity does not exist. So we are not going to use the maximum parsimony method. Then the second question will be whether some segmental similarity exists. If you look into the entire sequence like this by dragging this, you see that there are certain areas where there are similarities across different sequences. Say for example, for the first part, except for Gecko Gecko, which is quite expected because Gecko Gecko is a non mammalian species and its conserved sequence of OX1 should not match to the mammalian species because it is a totally different species. It is only a reptile. So, as expected, Gecko Gecko is showing variation, but other sequence of mammalian species, up to the first few nucleotides, they are exactly the same. Say, a six nucleotides are same in all sequences it is a t z t t a t z t t and even up to c next one same same except for gecko gecko but in the next one you see all are having a except for vampire bat where it is z that means there is a mutation again in vampire bat so like that 
we have seen that although there is no large scale similarity, but segmental similarity exists at certain segments. So, what method do we follow? As I said earlier, for this kind of result of sequence alignment, we will be choosing the distance matrix method. That means either neighbor joining method or UPGA method. Any of the two. Okay? So, based on the alignment result, we have to determine which method of uh, the parametric analysis would be suitable for our data. So, if we could find that there is no similarity at all over and above the uh, mutations across different species, we did not get any similarity. If result is such, then we will go for the third method that is called maximum likelihood method. But in this particular case, Based on our data, we could finally select the second method that is your distance matrix method. That means you can use either neighbor joining method or UPGA method. That will do now. So for that, our alignment has been done. We have decided the method to be followed for primary analysis. So this alignment was done only to determine the method to be followed for primary analysis and to have the alignment data and score behind the screen scores are already there and they are being maintained by the system and those scores will be used for phylogenetic analysis as i already showed you in the morning class so now we we'll close this alignment window we we'll click on this cross either you can do data saving before that save session or you can directly cross it and close it, it will ask you closing alignment explorer would you like to save the current alignment session you say yes because we will be needing this alignment session or data for the parenting analysis simply click yes then it is asking me what should be the name so name let us give the same name cox1 okay. or you can write cox1 then dot alignment so that you know that this is the alignment session alignment data not the original notepad data this is a alignment data so we are clicking cox dot alignment or maybe single single uh, cox will, one will be there but we can identify it later then where to keep it we we'll keep it on the desktop so we click on the here desktop so in the desktop there will be creation of a file called cox one dot align that will contain our data so we we'll click click save okay now let us go back to the desktop minimize it go to, this is the cox1 align file you see so this is carrying an m the symbol is carrying an m that means automatically system has recognized that this is a particular file which can be seen or which can be uploaded to the mega software manga software could identify this particular file. Earlier Cox1 file was not having this M, but this file was created by using Mega. Therefore, Mega has identified that this is its own file. So, what we can do, either we can double click on this file, or we can go back to the home window, home page of the Mega 11 software. This is the home, home page. So, here this time, we will not click on align. Because we are going, going to do the phylogenetic analysis. We will go to file, click on file. Then click on open a file or session. Because we are going to open a file previously created, the alignment file that we created. So click on open a file or session. Then it is asking which file to open. So we will go to desktop. In desktop, this is the cox1.align, this file. Not the original Cox1. Original Cox1 is a notepad file that will not work. We will have to bring this one, which was just created. Cox1 dot align. Click on that, then open. Now it is asking whether we want to analyze it or align it. As I told you, Mega 11 can be used for both alignment as well as analysis. Now we are going to do the phylogenetic analysis. Alignment is already done. So we will click analyze. Okay? Analyze. 
then if you ask him whether it is a protein coding nucleotide sequence data, what type of data we have? Yes, these are all gene sequences, COX-1 gene sequences of mitochondria, and they are capable of coding for protein. Protein is the cytochrome oxidase protein, the enzyme. So, who will say yes? It is a protein coding nucleotide data. Yes. So now, the sequence has been uploaded here. You see in this corner on the top, there are two options here. One is TEA, this is the file, sequence file, and the second one is closed data. So <coughs> click on closed data. If you click on closed data, the data will disappear. The data will be closed. But you want to click on the first one, TEA. You see? These are the sequences that have been uploaded. All these sequences that we have created by alignment. You see, the, there are dots and alphabets here. The appearance is different. All these dots indicate identity, identical nucleotide. All dots indicate identical nucleotide. And wherever there is a mutation, it is showing by displaying the particular nucleotide. So, from this window also, we can see that there are a lot of variations among these sequences. Okay? There is no uniformity in the, among the sequences. But in certain segments, there are sequence similarities. So, say for this part, there are high level of sequence similarity, except in very few mutations. So, segmental similarity is there, therefore, we will be using the distance matrix method. Now, is, uh, okay, you don't make it maximized because you will have to use the original home page. So now you come to the left side, you see, here also again, all the 12 sequences along with the by default 13 number of sequences, all of them are selected by clicking automatically. So you have to remove the click from the sequence number 1, sequence 1 that is in 13th position because as I said, this is by default appearing. This is not our required sequence. So if you do not remove this click, you cannot go forward. You will fail to have the alternative analysis. So don't forget it. Always it is important. In this step also, we will have to unclick this 13 because 13 is not the wanted sequence. Okay. All other sequences have been already selected by clicking. It's okay, fine. That means these sequences we will use for alternative analysis. Now when we go to the home page, in home page you see there is an option here, a menu called phylogeny. Phylogeny. We click on phylogeny, then you see it is asking which method you will be using. First one is maximum likelihood, second one is neighbor joining, third one is another method that we have not discussed that is called minimum evolution, then UPGNA, then maximum possible. As I already said for our purpose, with this data, we will be using neighbor joining or UPGMA. So both of them are equally competent, but what we will do, we will do the phylogenetic analysis by first using neighbor joining, then by UPGMA. Then after bootstrapping, we will see which is giving better bootstrap score. As I said, we need better bootstrap score. If it is more than 70 for most of the branches, it is always better. So, the method which will be giving better bootstrap score, that will be selected. Because we have two different methods available for doing the distance matrix analysis. So, let us use first the neighbor journey. Click on neighbor journey. It is asking, would you like to use the currently active data, that is your COX-1 align? Okay, you say yes, we are going to use it. Yes. Now, another screen has appeared, you see. There are many different options available. Don't give much importance to all the options at this point of time because you have to know many things about other aspects of bio properties. Don't change most of the options already displayed as default. But I will tell you what are the changes that you have to make. The most important change you have to make is here, desktop phylogeny. In your case, if you are using Mega for the first time, I think in your screen it is appearing as done. In your screen, screen, it might have appeared as test of phylogeny none. Okay? If it is showing as none, then you have to click on this drop down menu. Then two methods for 
validation or test of phylogenetic or validation will be available. One bootstrap method and the other is interior branch test. As I said, most commonly we will use bootstrap method. We will click bootstrap method. Then by default, bootstrap method, it may be showing 500 or 100 or 1000, whatever it is. Normally, we go for research purpose, 1000 analysis. But today, we will do it for 500 times. This is the minimum required because otherwise, if we increase to 1000, it will take longer time. So let us keep it as 500. 500 bootstrap means the data will be analyzed 500 times by randomly picking up samples out of the 12 sequences. Sometimes it will pick up 12, sometimes 11, sometimes 10, sometimes 9, like that. It will be repeating the analysis by the same method for 500 times. And every time you will see where the branches are appearing. And against every branch, it will show at what particular aspect uh, they are showing uh, the same branch out of 100 times, how many times. So that will be called a bootstrap value. So you can also change the model or method. It is by default appearing maximum composite likelihood. If you click here and click on the drop down menu, there are different methods available here. Okay. So there are different models usually used. If you are an expert enough, you can uh, uh, select any method according to your requirement, but you may use it by default likelihood method or we may, we may commonly use the uh, Timura Ni method, Timura NEI method. Okay, so you can keep it or maybe you can keep it as default the maximum composite likelihood method. So we will now for this purpose we keep maximum composite likelihood method. Okay, keep it as default, don't change anything, simply click OK. You see, the tree has appeared. So this is the tree belt. Okay, it's a by default appearing as a rectangular tree. Uh, all these figures are rectangular. And you see now, if you try to see the explain the tree as expected, because these are all conserved sequences of mitochondria of different mammalian species, along with an outlier gecko, we expected that. Gecko should be separated from others in terms of similarity, and they themselves should bring uh, uh, or form a clan separately. They should be not, uh, that means, merged with other clans. So, as expected, you see, Gecko itself is quite away from others, and it is itself making one single clan. But of course, Gecko Gecko is the ancestor or root for all other clans and leaves. That means the COX1 gene of mammalian species might have been derived from some other species like the gecko or any other uh, what is called reptile or maybe avian species. If we take into account many other species of different family or taxa, then the appearance will be different. But out of these species that we have taken, it appears that Gecko Gecko Cox1 gene was the ancestor for all other sequences of Cox1 gene of mammalian species. That means they were evolutionary more older. In the evolutionary history, Gecko Gecko Cox1 gene sequence is more older, older than that of the mammalian species. They were derived later on. As we know in the history of evolution also, uh, the uh, reptiles came first uh, compared to the mammalian species. Mammalian species are the latest addition to the evolution. So you see, as expected, the Bostoras exotic cattle and Jebu cattle or indigenous Indian cattle, they are making the same clan. And the bootstrap percentage is 100. That means 100 times when the bootstrapping was done, 500 times, all the 500 times, these branches appear as a single clan. That means it is almost sure that they are highly similar. And the length of this horizontal line here, which will be because here this is the horizontal line length, you see, this uh, scale is given 0 0.5, 0 0.05. That means the length of this horizontal line will indicate the distance of each other. So they are having 
only very less distance. Okay? Very less distance. Maybe one or two mutations are there between cattle and zebu cattle in the cox one gene. Not much. Then the next close relative is sheep, as expected, because sheep is also a ruminant. It's a ruminant species, similar to cattle. Then next relative is white lip deer. It's all white ruminant. Again, it is also a white ruminant of same nature. These are all ruminants, four quarter uh, stomach animals, four quarter stomach animals. So they are also the herbivorous species. So they are making therefore a single cluster. It's a single cluster. This is called a cluster. Regarding the clan, this is one clan, okay, and this is a cluster. Or you can say it is a bigger cluster. Within that, there are two subclusters, okay. Top cattle and snow leopard is making up one subcluster, and cattle, zebu cattle, sheep, and white sheep deer has, is making another subcluster. Similarly, you can define the uh, clan, uh, or maybe you can uh, start from the root, root, sub root. Or maybe cluster, sub cluster, sub sub cluster, sub sub cluster. You can go on like that. Then up to ultimately clan and the leaves. Now, as expected, dogs, cat, and leopard, snow leopard. They are also making another sub cluster. Why? Because they are closely related to each other. Cat and snow leopard both are feline. Both are feline species. Therefore, they are making a single clan. Then nearest to them is dog. They are more similar to cattle, uh, sheep and deer, rather than chimpanzee and pygmy chimpanzee. Pygmy chimpanzee and chimpanzee, they are almost similar, like cattle and zebu cattle. Okay? Similar with vampire bat and Chinese pangolin, they are also making one single clan. But of course, variation is higher. You see, the length of the horizontal lines are longer, means there is much variation or distance. So, if we want to, want to now see the diversities among them, that means what is the distance between them, uh, we can restore it down, minimize it, and then we can go to this distance or diversity. We can see. We can see distance. How about how distant they are? So, you can click on compute pairwise distances. Okay. Would you like to use the current active data? Yes. Okay. Okay. You see, in this window it is showing how much distance is there between each and every one. Say, cattle and chimpanzee, uh, then cattle, cattle and zebu cattle, cattle and dog like that, you can go on looking for it. So you see here, which cattle, serial number one is cattle, so which cattle, chimpanzee is showing 25% variation, 25.88%, you can express it in percentage or decimals. 0.2588 means 25.88%. But in case of cattle and zebu cattle, difference is 1.24% only. Only 1.24%. Between dog and cattle, there is difference of 23.65%. Like, like that way, the, these are the values obtained by sequence alignment. And that has been converted to the parallel tree. So I think it is clear to you. So this data of distance is reflected on the tree. Lesser the data, closer is the sequence. So this is the uh, tree then. Now this tree can be modified according to your necessity. Or you can use, uh, modify the names also. You can uh, do a lot of modifications as you need. As you, need. you can add a caption. Then how to modify the picture? You will have to go to this one, this particular options. So there are many options here you see. This is a rectangular option, one. So this is traditional. Traditional is rectangular. Okay? Under that, you have another option called straight. If you click it here, the diagram will get changed. Okay? Similarly, if you click again, under traditional count, you will get this type of picture. Then similarly, you can have radiation like this. You can have circular like this. As I have showed you earlier, or to 
your MS Word file for publishing your result or something uh, for publication, then it is very easy. You just uh, go to the image option. Go to image option. You can copy to clipboard. Or you can save as a DMP file, PDF file, PNG file, SBG file, or this type of files. You can save it as a file, or you can simply keep, uh, you can copy, copy to clipboard. It is copied to the computer memory. Now if we uh, open the Word file, suppose I am opening Word here, MS Word. Okay, when I open a word file, then here I can click, uh, click it and paste it because already the click is there in the memory. So I will press Ctrl V or right click paste. So it is pasted. So it has been given in a word file. That means you can take it to your manuscript or the article that you have written and it can be published. Okay, you can add caption here or before bringing it to it, you can change the nomenclature also if you require. So anything can be done by doing this. So now you see, if we see the bootstrap values here in this particular diagram, most of the bootstrap values are very good, except for these two where there are 55 and 61, less than 70, but others are mostly 100, 90, 60, you see 65, 70 very good score. That means the data is almost sufficient to go for this kind of analysis. But of course, for vampire bat and Chinese pangolin, maybe the sequence information was uh, shorter, sequence was shorter. That is why the bootstrap value is a uh, little less. But otherwise, it can be accepted. Or you can go for the UPGM method, another distance statistics method to see whether it is giving better bootstrap score. So for that we downsize it, then go to phylogeny again, go to list of UPGMA, construct this UPGMA tree, OK, bootstrap 500, it's OK, click OK. So it will be bringing another tree here. Here let us see what are the bootstrap values. So here the diagram is as you see almost same. Cattle and Zemu cattle making one clap, then a subcluster with sheep and white click here, dog cat and slow leopard making same, subcluster, chimpanzee it missing one clap, vampire bat and Chinese pangol in one clap, and gecko gecko is a root. It is almost same as that of the previous one because the methods are same. Methods are different, but the method principles of the methods are same. So result is almost same. But only thing is that bootstrap values are here different. Here bootstrap values are lesser than the previous one, you see. It has come down to 36, 46, 50. But the previous one was giving beta bootstrap value. So we will, in this case, be relying on the neighbor tree method rather than the EPGA method. So we keep that as the option for our future use. So this is the uh, tree already we have drawn with the neighbor joining method, so this will be keeping as the final tree, final tree for our population. So this is how we go for phylogenetic analysis using MEGA 1, sorry MEGA 11 software. So MEGA has got different, uh, so to say, versions available in the internet. You can use other versions also, they are almost same, but 11 is the most advanced having some improved features. That's why you should better use the 11th version because it is continuously being upgraded. Maybe after a few days, the 12th version will come. So there will be some additional improved features available. I think it is uh, understood by all. I hope so. If you have anything to ask, you can put questions now. I am not closing my presentation uh, so that I can show you something if it is required. So please ask questions if you have any doubts on the practical that we have covered. Thank you. Otherwise, I will see that everybody could follow.
Dr. Pitri, you are seeing, sir? You have yeah. raised your hand. Did you have any queries? Can you please tell me if I have any class to answer you? Other, I will assume that everybody could follow me step by step. Sir? Thank you very much. I'm stopping Thank you so much, sir. So for the practical session. If there are no queries, now we are going for the end of this session. Now I'd like uh, Miss Malika Borua to uh, end the session with a formal vote of thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it is to Thank you, everyone. Sir, and thank you, sir. So much, sir. The coordinator insisted by the staff and the principal of the college for giving me an opportunity to interact with all the participants of this training program. Wish you good luck for the next five days to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Namaskar. Namaskar. Sir. Namaskar.